NFL draft college expert, RG3, was playing in the NFL as a backup with the Ravens last season. He said he believes that the Vikings' third-round pick, this guy Mond, the quarterback out of Texas A&M, is a serious threat to steal the starting job with the Vikings in 2021. Quote, I could tell you number eight, meaning Cousins, in Minnesota is probably not real happy right now because Kellen Mond represents exactly what Cousins doesn't do well. Griffin babbled behind the microphones over at the Bleacher Report. He said that this uh, quarterback out of Texas A&M, this Mond guy, is a big physical quarterback. He can run and throw it all over the field and I don't think that's something that number eight is able to do. Now, keep in mind, he never he never actually said Cousins' name. He just said number eight. right? So he didn't want to say his name. Say the name! right? In that first part of the soundbite, he did not say the name. He wouldn't say it. Now, Griffin went on. He did mention the name. Griffin believes that the dual threat ability of the Texas A&M quarterback could be a difference maker for the Vikings. Of course, could is a weasel word. He said, quote, Cousins has been collecting checks there in Minnesota for a long time. Taking them to eight and eight, nine and seven seasons, Griffin added. I guess he forgot the 10 win season. Uh, If he had a bad start to the year like he did last year, I could see the fans and maybe the organization leaning towards Mond if he comes in and impresses, close quote. All right, let us discuss. A lot to unpack here. The question, is RG3 correct about the shaky status of Kirk Cousins and should Cousins be concerned about a third-round draft pick quarterback out of Texas A&M? I am shaking my head. No, 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 no. All right, I've got Millie Vanilli, Rhodes Scholar, and Umbrella. And we will combine all of these things together into an adequate, adequate Maller monologue. That's how we are going to do it. Now, to lead off with, Robert Griffin III has a lot of resentment towards Kirk Cousins. You don't need me to tell you that. These recent comments validate the speculation that there is legit bitterness here. And RG3 was supposed to have the career that Kirk Cousins has had at the very worst. At the very worst, Robert Griffin III was supposed to be the one cashing big fat checks and still being in the NFL and being relevant. Those things haven't happened. He was the much ballyhooed number two pick in the draft. The the then Washington Redskins traded a massive bounty of draft picks to the St. Louis Rams at the time for the rights to the Heisman winner. And instead, RG3 was the flash in the pan. He was the Millie Vanilli of his day. He was lip-syncing. He was lip-syncing, right? He was burned by the law of the instrument. Now, what is the law of the instrument? The law of the instrument means that if you only do one thing well, you're going to only try to do that particular thing. For example, if you're a pitcher in baseball, all right, if you're only a fastball pitcher, you're going to try to strike everyone out. If you lose your fastball, you're done. And if you're a running quarterback who cannot get the job done throwing the ball, the law of instrument comes into play. And that's what happened to RG3. He got hurt, right? He's forced to be a traditional drop back quarterback to win games purely on the strength of his arm. The law of the instrument kicked in. He was a fraud and a phony and a fake, and he couldn't do it. Throwing the balls a drop back passer was not his forte. It was kryptonite. And so now he's out there directing his lasers at Kirk Cousins. It's like taking every shot he can. Cousins was the, the guy drafted lower. He wasn't supposed to be the guy that made it. Now, secondly, if you take three steps back, okay, three steps back, RG3 is a Rhodes scholar at collecting paychecks. The very thing he's accusing The very thing he's accusing Kirk Cousins of doing, look at the mirror on the wall. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? RG3, right? That's pretty much all he has done in recent years. Now, they're not as big, the checks. They're not as big. But as far as return on investment, 
Uh, Cousins has at least put up some statistical success from 2016 to 2020. And really 2015, he was injured, but 2015 to, to 2020, Griffin earned about $17 million. You know how many touchdown passes RG3 has thrown in that period of time? Three. $17 million for three touchdowns and seven interceptions and about a little over 1,100 yards passing. Which, by my expert analysis, means he has been utterly useless for the Browns and the Ravens. But he's earned a bunch of money. During that same stretch, Kirk Cousins has 143 touchdowns, 21,000 passing yards, and he had a career year last year, 35 touchdowns. I got off to a terrible start. Some of those numbers were inflated because the Vikings were way behind, but still 35 touchdowns. $137 million, Kirk Cousins, while being at least a reliable player. He didn't miss a bunch of games because of injury. And all of that in a bag of chips for Cousins, who was the 102nd pick of the 2012 draft, way back then, barely remember it, fourth-round pick. And he's provided average quarterback play with Washington and the Vikings. He is the baseline of average, right? He, that is the definition of average is Kirk Cousins. The guy has started 104 games. This is a great stat. Cousins has started 104 games in his NFL career. And at the end of the game, walking off the field, Kirk Cousins, the team he was playing for at the time, has 51 wins, 51 losses, and two ties. In 104 starts, he's exactly a 500 quarterback. You're going to win half the time. You're going to lose half the time, no matter what. That's much better, by the way, than RG3, who's only started... 42 games in his career, his team has a 381 winning percentage when he has been the starting quarterback. Now, listen, Cousins is 32. He's got two years left and $56 million guaranteed. That's pretty, pretty good job security. In a league that does not typically give out fully guaranteed contracts, it's rare. It's happening more and more. Cousins has that. All right, final thought. So Robert Griffin III... If I were to look at his career right now in a snapshot, he's got a brighter future as a television commentator, talking head, putting makeup on, than as a backup quarterback. The the fact that he is willing to break from the fraternal order of football players to throw haymakers is a good sign. But he's going to have to do it against people other than Kirk Cousins because it's obvious that when it comes to Kirk Cousins – Robert Griffin III is having a dance at the haters' ball, right? It's personal. You have to nurse the grudge. If the TV thing doesn't work out, and who knows if it will, and RG3 wants to play again, he should get his umbrella ready. Now, why should he get his umbrella ready? Because he was serving up so much sodium chloride that he is in line if they replace the umbrella girl mascot, you know, on that Morton Salt If they change the mascot up and put a new mascot, they could put RG3 holding an umbrella because when it rains, it pours. And as for this quarterback, who I don't know much about, I was reading some some scouting guides on him. I watched some tape on on the internet. Kellen Mond is his name, I guess. Uh, He's a rudimentary prospect. Undercooked would be the way it would be described. Uh, Premature to say either way that what's going to happen. The smart money, though, says don't hold your breath. Right? Don't hold your breath. In fact, in 2020, here's a troubling, ominous sign for this particular player's future. He completed just 35% of intermediate throws outside the numbers. That ain't good. Uh, that, that, that reeks of not going to be able to make it. He's also got a rather narrow frame. He can fill that up a little bit. Inconsistent with his accuracy. And yeah, we can break down what it takes to be good in the NFL, what it, do, what it doesn't take. But the most important thing is not arm strength, it's not mobility, it is accuracy. And I would rather have the accurate quarterback that can make all the basic throws than the guy that can run like a gazelle and has the bazooka for an arm but can't complete the basic throws. Because most of the NFL, here's the ugly truth about the NFL, you watch pro football, it's those short throws. It's yards after catch, yakety yak. 
It's just consistently throwing the football to where it's supposed to be. It's not about all the other bells and whistles and all that. That's what makes the highlights, but consistently winning games. Tom Brady can't do any of those amazing video game type highlight uh, throws. He doesn't do that, but he's been able to figure it out. Uh, and, and so the NFL comparison to this quarterback out of Texas A&M is Josh Dobbs. That right there is a red flag. That is a big red Who? flag. Jo- when you're compared to Josh Dobbs, that is the scouting community saying, I don't think this guy's going to be any good. 